Time for a genuinely difficult daily map. This is the first map that I think is going to stress not just the new players out. Literally all of you are going to freak out because today's challenge is quite on the pain side. So let's take a look at the map first and then the enemies and what tags we're going to be taking along with the risky gameplay and the max risk gameplay. So this is Arena 8 which is CC5's main map. There are a lot of painful people over here. Apparently everyone's under investigation. So let me just go into my training ground and then hopefully you guys can see it from there. Yep, there it is. So, um, the casters are weak to physical damage and this guy over here is also weak to physical damage. So this is on the leftmost lane of the map. This goes to say that if you use a sniper against them, it's probably going to take them out, which is what we're going to do later on. Then there's this training gloom pincer. He has a high defense and a high resistance, so you can kind of pick your poison as to whether you want to use a uh, physical damage or arts damage against him. In this case, I'm going to use arts damage against him later on. In the max risk version, I'm going to be using physical damage. And then afterwards, this one uh, right over here, he has very low stats, but the problem is that when he first appears on the map, he has a shield. So that shield has super high defense and resistance, almost making him completely immune. This one needs you to just stall him out and then once his shield drops, you can kill him with whatever that you have. This guy, the shielder, very high attack but he has very low resistance. So us damage is great against him. Um, there's the Blade Helm Nightclub Trainee which is weak to physical damage. Um, yeah, it's only weak to physical damage. He has a very big painful skill which lowers the attack of anyone on the map who has the highest attack at the moment. So this guy is like mission critical, you want to try to remove him as fast as possible. And then of course there's the two main bosses. So this particular boss uh, attacks physical damage and he only slams down onto one particular operator. If there are any other units around that operator, they will also receive the damage together. So you kind of want to isolate whoever that you're using to block him. And at the same time he has a huge attack every 20 seconds. But the attack can be stunned and can be slapped on. Uh, meaning to say, if you have a Kafka, a Project Raid against him, they're going to be very good to handle him. Um, and then if, let's say, you kill this guy first, this guy is going to get increased ASPD. If you kill this guy first, this guy will get increased ASPD. So you want to try to kill them both at the same time. For the Withered Knight, he deals arts damage. And he's able to deal arts damage uh, across to multiple targets. If I'm not wrong, it's three targets, I think. Um, oh no, it's two targets. Attack two targets simultaneously. Right. Um, and after when he dies, I think he can actually target more people. Um, he fire explosive arrows. Every 20 seconds ish, there is like a huge purple arrow. So if there's anyone around, whoever that has the purple arrows targeted onto them, they will also receive a huge amount of us damage. So same idea, isolate your operators. Don't bunch them together because if not, you'll make them die to the two bosses very easily. All right. Some concept that you guys have understood, let's look at the mission for the day. So, the main mission is a horrible one. Uh, you will have to take the risk tree tag that gets both the bosses to appear at the same time. And they also have increased stats, whether it's their attack and their HP. So this is terrible. Um, they also have increased defense on the Corrupted Knight. So this goes to say that you really want to use us damage against him and the Withered Knight gets increased resistance, so physical damage is going to be better. Now for the other text that I'm going to use for Risk 8, I'm going to take redeployment time, because I'm not really redeploying anyone through my strat. I'll take the DP down, and I'll take HP down. HP up, terrible. Um, guard and Medic, the cost of them being uh, increased, also not good, because the main star of the show is a 6 star Medic. And then afterwards, I'm not going to take uh, the max life points, since... Um, I could allow you guys to leak some enemies later on, but I'll teach you how to not do it. Because if, let's say you don't leak any enemies, you can actually choose this tag. But if you do leak enemies, then choose this tag. Alright? And we'll not take attack up. Attack up is horrible. Okay, so that's risky. This is the squad they're going to be using. We are taking a Kelsit Skill 2 M3. Take note, it's Skill 2, not Skill 3. Because the... Boss, the, the Archer boss is weak to physical damage as I told you guys. There's no point using um, true damage against him even though it's going to be a big amount. If you never knew, um, Kelsit's skill 2 is really really strong. It has 
high physical damage value and is able to attack all block enemies. It's like a portable blaze if you think about it. So it's nice to have Kelsey in the stage. Um, we'll take her in. And then afterwards, you'll want someone who can stun the uh, Corrupted Knight, the one with the hammer. So Cliff Heart is an example. Your Cliff Heart just needs to be skill 2, rank 5. So if you don't have an Elite 1, you might want to speed build her to Elite 1 and then use her skill 2 at rank 5 in order to make this strategy work. Rank 7, sweet. The skill will come up much faster. But rank 5 is for safety. If not, you can take Project Red. Um, you can take Phantom. Uh, no, Phantom is a bit risky, by the way, because Phantom doesn't always stun. But Project Red on skill 2 can throw in a stun to get the boss to not cast his huge attack. Kafka, that is at Elite 0, will also work because Kafka is able to put people to sleep whenever that she's deployed. Um, anyone else that I have in mind, you could try Ash. Um, the moment you start Ash skill, you must end it immediately so that you stun the boss just for the moment. Um, if you have other operators that you can think of that cast stun, go ahead and use them. Uh, I believe Silek also stuns. Yeah, Silek is also a pretty good choice. Silek on her skill 3. You turn on the skill, she's going to cast a stun for a moment, and then the boss can't do his big damage. If you think only one stunner is not enough, bring a second one. And also, if you're using fast redeploys instead of Cliff Heart, do not take this redeployment tag. It's not going to help your fast redeploys. You should take this. But if you don't, uh, if you're using Cliff Heart like my strategy, then take this, okay? Then, you'll want two Vanguards because we're having the DP risk. So there's Myrtle and there's Korea, a Pioneer Vanguard and a Standard Bearer. If you don't have a Myrtle in your account, you might need two Standard Bearers or even three to make up for the DP that you need in the stage. Take a Marksman Sniper, uh, Cruise is the easiest example that I can give, and then bring along a Caster as well. The stronger, the better it will be. So if you've got an Aya, you've got a Kyob, you've got uh, maybe someone else that you have in mind, go ahead and bring them. Click is a great example that I can put for you guys here. And then after this, bring a protector. Uh, this is a defender, basically. Bring someone who can increase their defense. It'll be quite sweet in this stage. And then get a single target medic. The stronger they are, the better, of course. If you have other higher rarity versions, please take them in the stage. And finally, take a arts guard. So it can be an arts guard or someone with super high physical damage. So for example, you can replace Moose with a Surtur. You can replace Moose with uh, Sedoroka, uh, Estesia as well. If you want to, Moose can also be replaced by Tones, by Blaze, Mountain, Weedy. Um, I believe Silver skill 2 is also okay. Anyone else that I have in mind? Um, no, no on skill 1 is also very, very good. As long as this particular operator can kill the Gloom Pincers, the Crabs, on the right lane, then you can use them to replace Moose. Alright, you get the idea? Now we have 9 operators in play. There are more free space behind. If you want to add... Um, some of your strong units that you have built in your account, please go ahead and do so. If not, let's play the stage. Arena 8 on Risk 8. Now to begin the stage, you place your Pioneer Vanguard first. Following up, you will be putting in your Standard Bearer right behind. Then use your Vanguard skill whenever it's ready. Place a Marksman Sniper over here. Alright, using the skill as you see there. Then place an Arts Guard over here, facing upwards. Alright. Now I'm gonna be putting in a Caster into the map, sitting right here, facing downwards. Let's use Korea's skill. And I'm going to put Kelsit facing upwards. And then Monster will follow right behind, sitting on this tile. We're going to need a Medic to help our little Korea there. So place a Medic over here, facing to the right. Okay, looking good. Now, you have enough DP already, you can trade your courier out for a defender, and then you can also remove Myrtle. Now, if you ever feel like your Moose is like losing a lot of HP, and you want her to get some healing, you can bring along a healing defender, 
and place the healing defender right beside her. Alright? Now, again, this is Kelsey's skill 2, not skill 3. Let's use it against the Blade Helm trainee that is weak against physical damage. You can see that because this is an AoE attack, it's also helping to kill out all the stray mobs that's being blocked by monster right now. Nice and easy. So, use Kelsey's skill again. Get monster to have an attack up and deal damage onto everyone that is blocking. There's another Blade Helm trainee on the left. We're gonna need to use Click Skill to try to get rid of him. So let's do just that. Turn on Click Skill and cast a little more uh, attack. Now feel free to use Monster Skill whenever you want to just clear out her lane. See how Moose health is dropping very low? This will get some of you pretty worried. Now the caster on the left side has already died at the count of 46. So we're gonna put Cliffheart over here facing upwards because that was the last caster of the map. Right? Now the two bosses have appeared. Now don't be too afraid here. Follow on with me. The boss on the left has a charge attack as I've mentioned. When you see his eyes turn red, using whatever operators you have to stun or sleep his attack, use their skill to stop him in his tracks. Now on the right over there, you're gonna see there's a bunch of crabs. In order to not leak anyone in this stage, we can use our two block pioneer vanguard to hold the crabs back. So you hold them in place so that Moose can eliminate one. You can remove your courier. You can also place your one block Standard Bearer to hold the crab and then you'll preserve Moose health. If not, if you don't want to do this, you can just leak the two crabs because you didn't take the HP seal if you're following this strat. Okay, I think is he gonna cast his charge attack? Okay, he is. Now, it takes two skill use of Kelsey's skill 2 to eliminate the archer boss on the right. But we want to kill both bosses at the same time so that they don't become triggered. So Time it properly with me. Let's use Kelsey's skill on the right there. And let's use um, Click skill in a little bit as well. Okay, is the boss gonna cast his charge attack? Yes, yes he is. Let's use Click Heart skill. We stun him in place. And I'm now gonna trigger Click skill to deal more damage onto the boss. We speed up the killing on the left there. And then, looks pretty good. His health is going down. I'll use Kelsey's skill on the right. And both bosses will die at the same time. You need to juggle. This is the challenge of today. The hardest challenge I've seen so far in CC7. So hopefully you guys can follow this easily. If not, now let me show you guys how to adapt this into Max Risk. Okay, Max Risk run. Let's take every operator over here. Even though there's the guard and medic increase DP, I'm gonna sleep on it. I'm not gonna think that it's there. We're gonna fix ourselves with even more DP generators. So, I'll be taking a Myrtle, an Elysium, a Backpipe, three Vanguards in the stage. There are two Guards that I'm using, a Mountain and a Surter. Then, I'm also gonna use a Defender, just like how I used Beagle just now. This time, I'm gonna use a Saria into the stage. Um, following on, there's no Snipers. I don't need a sniper. Instead, my sniper is actually the backpipe of the stage. Um, I do want to still bring Cliffheart, actually. So Cliffheart is going to be very helpful over here uh, because of her stun being perfectly aligned with the boss. Uh, any other operators that I might want? Let me just take a quick look. I'm going to take a Telopsis to get um, some SP generation increase. If you didn't know, her talent allows all your allies to have a faster SP regeneration. And then I'm gonna still take Kelsit on her skill 2. So as I told you, the skill 2 helps against the weakness of the Blade Helm trainee and also the Archer boss. So we'll use that. And finally, I'm gonna take a Skadi Outer to boost a bit of attack. Skadi Outer is gonna help me very critically here. Now, 10 operators. I believe you can do this with much fewer people. But let me show you guys the idea that I had for the stage. Thank goodness there's no Chen Alter that I want to bring today. Arena 8, Risk 15. Map to Tekiza Hyo, DMA Sete, or Tekiyo Stamus. Shosho, Homachi Kudasai. 
みんな助けに来たよビクトリアのバグパイプリンゴちゃん今日もよろしくねアンプリングはミュークアンプリングウォーターソーリーハイアンベイアンガーピースマウントのオーバーヒアフェイシングアップウッズ and then let's get the standard bearer Following up, I will want to put in Telopsis to increase the speed of the DP generation. Just like that, right over here. I've already turned on Mountain Skill, which helps him to self heal, and it's great for this stage. I'm gonna put Scadi Alter over here. And then I will be using Backpipe Skill to actually eliminate this Defender Boy. Right, we've got DP coming in. Let's click their skill and miss click there. I'm going to put Kelsit here along with Monster. And then Cliffhart is going to be here early in the stage, assisting there a little. Nice stuff. Let's get some DP. Then I'm going to be using Kelsit skill as I did just now. Let me just increase the attack up. Now I'm use spec pipe skill on the left to eliminate the shielder boy. Getting some DP in. One spec pipe skill in. I'm gonna remove her and I will trade her for a defender. I can now take uh, Elysium and oh I'm gonna use her skill and Myrtle out of the stage. Serta is gonna sit right over here facing to the right. I'll be using Serta's skill to eliminate the enemies over there. Really use Kelsit's skill again to clear out this lane. Let me use Telopsis' skill to give a bit of rapid healing onto Serta. Kelsit, clear out the lane for me. Thank you. Oh, the boss is here. So here comes the juggle. The thing is, in this stage, there's the attack up. The attack of the archer guy is really, really high. So I place Skadi Alter right beside Kelsit to give Kelsit even more healing onto Monster, since Monster can only be healed by Kelsit. Then, by juggling Kelsit's skill and the seaborne placement, I will make sure I will make sure that I keep Monster alive. So we're gonna see that in play in a bit. I think the boss is going to cast his critical attack. There you go. Let's stun him. So I'm keeping watch of monster's health right now. Uh, I'm not going to use... Okay, I'm going to use Celtic skill. Like... No. Okay, I'm not using it yet. I'm going to put a Seaborn first. So that will get monster's health to go up. Okay, let's stun the boss. Okay, waiting out. So I think Monster's Health is still okay for now. Uh, I'm keeping watch of his health. Okay, I'm a little afraid. Stun. That's scary. Okay, let's use Kelsey's skill. So Kelsey's skill, if you didn't know what happens on skill 2, is that Kelsey's skill increases ASPD meaning to say she's healing two times faster on Mastery 3. That way, I'm giving speedy healing and monster can be kept alive. Very, very nice in this stage. And then uh, with the use of the skill, I've cleared out all the smaller mobs as well. Now it's left with the Archer Knight himself. Critical attack? Is that coming? There you go. Okay, very scary stuff. I'm gonna put the Seaborn to help Monster get more health. And I'm gonna put Serta right over here. Onto the boss. I'm gonna activate Serta's skill. There you go, critical attack. Get a stun. Let's get uh, Telopsis' skill up in a little bit so that I can give Serta more health. I'm not gonna use Kelsey's skill yet. I'm gonna time it so that it kills both bosses at the same time. Looking good. Let's activate Celtic skill and kill them both all together. What a difficult max race of a daily. 
Risk 15, my friends. And that's the end of week one, if I understand correctly. This is day seven already. So we're going to start afresh with a brand new week. One more new map that you guys may not have seen tomorrow, I think. Oh, wait, is there? Yeah, there is one more new map tomorrow. And then if not, there's going to be all the refresh maps six more times. All right, that's that for today's guide. If not, I shall see you guys soon. Bye-bye.